Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. Happy Sunday. I hope everybody is doing good today. So I wanted to come on here and talk about the whole Umar Johnson situation, honey. So if you guys do not know, once again, Dr. Umar Johnson was trending all over Twitter yesterday. And the whole situation was a hot damn mess. So I had to post some of it on Instagram. So what basically went down is that Mike Tyson was doing an interview with Freddie Gibbs. And Freddie Gibbs is a rapper. And so basically they got to talk about white girls and how white girls was the bomb in the 80s with the big hair and all that stuff. And then Freddie Gibbs was like, oh, shit. I think we got to chill out because, you know, Dr. Umar is not going to like this. And Mike Tyson is like, who the fuck is Dr. Umar? You know what I'm saying? He didn't know who he was. And so Freddie Gibbs was trying to school Mike Tyson on who Dr. Umar was. Child, this whole situation was a hot damn mess. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Yeah, there were some good ones. Yeah, white girls in the 80s was good. Had With the lot. big hair and shit. Michelle Pfeiffer and all that type shit. Doc, Dr. Umar going to get mad at us for talking about white girls. <laughs> Who's Dr. Umar? You never heard of Dr. Umar? He doesn't like white people or black people talking about white people. Oh, he don't like white people. Huh? He don't like white people. So what's his problem? I don't know, man. He's just a righteous black. I mean, he got some cool ideas, but you know, but that, but if he like have if he have hate in it, it can't be cool. That shit ain't cool. That part of it ain't cool. None of it's cool. There's any hate involved, it can't be cool. I don't care if it's, if it's dictation rhymes and it sounds right. It can't be I cool. I can't believe though. you ain't never heard of Dr. Umar. You should have Dr. Umar come on this motherfucker. That'd be tight. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> cool. I, I, I got to see Dr. Umar's work and stuff. He just don't like, you know, uh, interracial dating, man, which is stupid to me. Yeah, you know. Then who is he? Who is he? Who is he to have that thought? Who is he to have that opinion I guess and make he, sure, man, and think that it counts? I guess he, the nigga's a doctor. I don't know, man. Shit, I just be looking at shit, laughing at some of the shit. It's funny to me. You know yeah, I can dig it. I guess so. <laughs> well, what I will say about him, he got some good, like, um, business approach ideas for black people. I can't slam him. He got some, you know, good ideas. I don't know him. So well, he, is, he, is he wealthy? I, I can't say. I don't know, you know. All right, y'all just saw the interview. <laughs> And when Mike Tyson says, well, is he wealthy? <laughs> As if that makes a difference on somebody's character. But I thought that was funny. And um, I mean, from the looks of it, you know, from the looks of this meme that I posted on my Instagram page, I don't know if he's wealthy or not because he'd be quick to snap, honey, when you ask him about why he's always filming outside or in his car. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Okay. Why is he never in the house? That is not relevant at all. I don't heard that damn snort. He said, it's none of your business why he's in the car. It's irrelevant. So at this point, who knows, honey? We don't know what he did with the school money. You know, I and many people donated money to this school. The school's not done. So I don't know if he got wealthy from the school or if he's not wealthy. We don't know what happened. Supposedly, he's still building the school. Somebody in the comment section said when he first heard about the school, he was nine. He's now 21. I said, damn, this school been being built for so dang on long. So anyways, you know Dr. Umar's a character, honey. Regardless of the situation, regardless of the school not being done, Dr. Umar still, you know, he still makes me laugh and he still drops knowledge. So I'm not going to take that from him. So he replied back to I am Mike Tyson and Freddie Gibbs. Child, he went off. He wants all the smoke. He wants Floyd Mayweather to train him. He's ready with the ones and twos. He was in his little boxing stance. I said Dr. Umar is a hot damn mess. Y'all go ahead and check out his little rant here. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I was getting ready for tomorrow's New York City Black Parent Boot Camp in Brooklyn and somebody sent me a link. I was sent the link. I'm going to talk about this tonight, but I'm just giving you a little intro. They sent me a link of Iron Mike Tyson, who I respect, one of my favorite athletes of all time, speak with Brother Freddie Gribbs. And uh, brother, they were talking about white girls, something that... Uh, famous black men like to do they were talking about white girls and uh freddie said we can't be talking about these white girls the dr umar gonna be mad at us well that was the first mistake brother freddie because i don't get emotional because black men don't know how to be loyal to black women that doesn't get me emotional my brother politics is not about emotions brother freddie politics is not about emotions so when you say dr umar will be angry at us for talking about white girls you are incorrect 
I understand, overstand, and understand the post-traumatic slavery disease of the American Negro. I wouldn't get upset with you, brother. I will have compassion for you. I will hurt for you that we have lost our way as black men. Don't ever say I'm going to get angry because you want to talk about white girls. If that's the case, I'd be angry all day. No, sir, brother. You got to understand, understand, and overstand who I am and what I stand for, my brother. I don't get angry because black men love white girls. That's not what I do, my brother. What you should have said, what you could have said, okay, what should have been stated is that Dr. Umar does not support interracial marriages because they take away from the building of solid black families between the black man and the black woman that's what you should have said this is not about emotions brother this is not about hating white folks this is about loving my people loving my race loving my woman loving my community it has nothing to do with hating anybody else so you misrepresented me brother freddie you misrepresented me and then you went on and then you went on you said well dr umar does got some good things to say but then you also said that uh my position on interracial marriages i forget the word you use but you basically said it was some bullshit or something like that right or some garbage or something like that and then you went on again and you took another shot at me and you said something to the effect that uh what did you say you took two shots two shots uh then you said something about um i don't listen to that part or that's foolish. You said that was stupid or foolish that I disagree with interracial relationships. It is stupid and foolish. That's not your words, my brother. I don't want to put words in your mouth. But you said something to the effect that it was stupid or foolish. My position on black men sticking to black women so we can rebuild the black community. That, that, that's goofy to y'all. That's foolish to y'all. That's, that's stupid to y'all. And that's a damn shame. That is a damn shame. I am embarrassed that black men, I am embarrassed that black men feel that there's something wrong with black men who say we need to stick to our own women so we can rebuild our community. I'm embarrassed that you feel that way. Now, I'm not knocking my brother, Freddie. You, when you mentioned my name, I said, okay, the brother is, you know, trying to put Mike Tyson onto some consciousness, some real consciousness. But then... You know, you don't back me up. And I don't need you to back me up, my brother. But if you're going to put my name out there, you should have at least articulated who I am. The best you could come up with is he don't like white people. That was your response when he asked you, who is Dr. Umar? You said he don't like white people. Are you serious, my brother? Are you serious? All the work that I have done, am doing, and continue to do for our race and the best thing you could come up with when someone asks you who is dr umar he don't like white people you don't mention my credentials you don't mention my work my books my school the fact that i'm the main person out here saving black boys saving black children i'm the main reason why black parents can go into these schools and uh, uh articulately and intelligently advocate for their children and defend their children and keep them out of special ed and keep them off drugs all that i do i'm the number one black consciousness raiser in the world and the best thing you can say is he don't like white folks that's the best thing that you can say is he don't like white folks my brother you do not have to defend me but if you're going to mention me at least be honest and be fair in what you say about me brother your body language when he said you should bring dr umar on the podcast you froze up and you stop and then you said wait 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 a minute i got to do some research on him but your body language did not correspond with your words if you didn't know who i am your body you should not have reacted physically the way that you did you would have just said i don't know the brother i'll look him up and i'll see no sir you had a full body reaction when he mentioned my name iron mike tyson had a full body reaction when brother freddie mentioned my name so there's no way your mouth can say one thing and your body language says something different there's no way your mouth can say one thing and your body language says something totally different i think you know who i am it is almost impossible 
for you to live in America and not know who I am. It's impossible. It's impossible to live in an African world and not know who I am. Brother Mike Tyson, when you say, who is he to have that position? What are you saying? I got to be a billionaire to have that position? I got to be a millionaire to have that position? Yes, sir. Black power. I appreciate you, God. One love to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't understand. What credentials do I need to hold to have an opinion that goes against the mainstream narrative? Who is he to have that opinion? That tells me that you're working from an elitist, exclusive, black, bourgeoisie, celebrity mindset. Sister Nina said we can raise 10 million. Sister Nina said pay-per-view Mike Tyson versus the Prince of Pan-Africanism. We can get 10 million. Somebody get the boxing promoters on the phone. Somebody get Bernard Hopkins. Nardi, hit me up. No Philly, it's time to stand up. Nardi, hit me up. No Philly, it's time to stand up. I want Bernard Hopkins to train me. I want the executioner. I want the greatest middleweight boxing champion of all time from my neighborhood, North Philly, the executioner, Bernard Hopkins. I want him to train me. Let's do it. Let's do the podcast. Let's do the intellectual sparring match. And let's do it live. The King Kong heavyweight champion of black consciousness against mighty Mike Tyson, the Iron Man. King Kong of consciousness versus the I He's the heavyweight champion of boxing. I'm the heavyweight champion of black consciousness. He's the heavyweight champion of boxing. I'm the heavyweight champion of black consciousness. Let's do it, family. Let's do it, family. Exhibition mount. Five rounds. Y'all say three rounds? I don't think three rounds is enough time. We got to get the people what they pay for. How much can we charge for the tickets? Iron Mike and King Kong. Iron Mike and Notorious... RBG. I'm ready for this. As long as Bernard Hopkins is training me, if I can't get Bernard, I want Floyd. If I can't get Bernard, I want Floyd. If I can't get Bernard Hopkins, North Philly owned. If I can't get Bernard Hopkins, North Philadelphia's owned, I want Floyd Mayweather to train me. Five rounds. I got Mike Tyson on the height. I got a height advantage. I got a height at that. I'm going to watch some of them old fights. I got a height at, no, $50. No, sir. You ain't paying no $50 to see me put my life on the line. Them tickets is at least $250. Nosebleed is $250. Nosebleed tickets to see Iron Mike and Dr. Umar, $250. We trying to raise money for the school, family. We trying to raise money for the school. Shout out to Brother Freddie. Shout out to Iron Mike. I still love y'all. But y'all didn't do me or my platform any service with that coonish conversation y'all had today. But no, I'm going to do what Ali said. Float like a butterfly, sting his ass like a bee. I'm going to do like Ali said. Float like a butterfly, sting his ass like a bee. I'm going to be in there like Ali. Kumbaya on that ass. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I can survive five rounds. I can't beat Mike Tyson. I would never disrespect his legacy like that. I cannot beat Mike Tyson. I will never disrespect his legacy like that. But I think I can survive five rounds. And I think I could get me a couple shots in. I think I can survive five rounds. And I think I... What y'all think? Where's my queens? Is the queens with me? Where the hearts at? Where the hearts at from the e Day kingdom? Is the ladies with the prince? Is the ladies with the prince? Black power. One love. One love. One love. It's going to be sold out. It's going to be a boxing match like no other. It's going to be a boxing match like you've never seen. Muhammad Ali, born again. Let's make it pop. Iron Mike Tyson and the Prince of Pan-Africanism. Five rounds to raise money for the Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey, RBG, International. The Queens is with me. The, I love my sisters. I love my sisters. Lord have mercy. It's a shame I can only have two wives. I love my sisters. I love my sisters. It's a shame I can only have two wives. It's time for Mike Tyson and Dr. Umar five rounds. It's time for Mike Tyson and Dr. Umar five rounds. It's time for Mike Tyson and Dr. Umar five rounds. Somebody get Bernard Hopkins on the phone. Somebody get Bernard Hopkins on the phone. Somebody get Bernard Hopkins on the phone. Somebody get Floyd Mayweather on the phone. <laughs> 
When I tell you Dr. Umar is a hot damn mess, y'all, when he jumped up and got the box and said, somebody get Bernard Hopkins on the phone, get him on the phone. I just, Umar is a mess. When he said, I'm gonna be in there like Ali, kumbaya on that ass, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I see, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> But he was speaking some truth, though, about, you know, Freddie Gibbs and Mike Tyson. Because I definitely, you know, kind of made me feel it when he was like, you know, is he wealthy? Who is he to have that opinion? It did come out very, very elitist. So I definitely agree with that. Because regardless of your status, regardless of your financial income, you should be allowed to have a different opinion from anybody, you know, regardless of the situation. So I definitely agree with Umar Johnson on that one. I'm not surprised that he jumped on this story because, you know, he can say all that shit about, oh, people be doing stuff to trend and people just be trying to be famous. Oh, my honey. He he loves when he trends. He loves when he's a topic of conversation. You know, he's going to have a response for that ass. So he had a lot of us cracking up yesterday. I was like, well, shit, I low key want to see the fight. I might be willing to drop 250 to come see this fight. We know he's not going to beat Mike Tyson. OK, but he says that he can last at least five rounds. So at least if he can last five rounds, I'm here for it. Hell, you had Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul fighting not too long ago, and Logan Paul did pretty damn good. So I'm here for this little bootleg boxing match. It's going to be interesting to see if it ever even happens. Well, anyways, after his rant, Freddie Gibbs uh, got word that Umar Johnson definitely felt away and wanted to box. So this is what Freddie Gibbs had to say on social media. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Then he also said, shout out to Dr. Umar. When I wrote him from jail five years ago, showing love, I got no response. I'm glad you enjoyed the Tyson podcast, though. Keep pushing, brother. And then he encouraged his fans to, you know, go out and support him. So when I tell you they was going in all day yesterday on this situation on social media, it was definitely funny. You know what I'm saying? But Dr. Umar has a, a funny sense of humor. So I wasn't surprised that he responded back at all. But I also feel like part of it, too, was, you know, a little bit of narcissism. Let's keep that real. I think he kind of felt the way that Mike Tyson didn't know who the hell he was. But, you know, there's people out here, honestly, they'll go viral on social media. And I'll be like, I had no idea this person even existed. And they be having millions and millions of followers. So everybody's not going to know who everyone is at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? But I'm sure he knows who Dr. Umar is now, right? So... The whole situation is funny, and I'm glad that, you know, Freddie's taking it lightheartedly, and for the most part, even though Dr. Umar chose violence, okay, he's still taking it lightheartedly, and he's not disrespecting Mike Tyson's legacy. He did admit that he knows that Mike Tyson will whoop his ass, but at least he can hang a few rounds, and like I said, I'm here for it. I would definitely pay to go see Mike Tyson and Dr. Umar go toe for toe. I think that'd be really interesting. Maybe they should do that to help, you know, finish building the school or maybe get the proceeds from the fight to the conscious community or something, honey. I don't know, but I'm here for it. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know what you guys think about this whole mess that went down yesterday with Umar Johnson basically calling out Freddie Gibbs and Mike Tyson for their interview and saying that neither one of them know what they're talking about. How do you guys feel about this situation? Do you think that Dr. Umar could last five rounds against Iron Mike? Iron Mike is a lot older. So, you know, he's not the same Mike Tyson of, you know, the 80s and 90s. But do you think that if they got into a fight, Umar would have a potential of winning? Like Logan Paul almost had a potential of, you know, beating Floyd Mayweather. It came very, very close. Or do you feel like Mike Tyson would just knock Umar out and call it a damn day? And last but not least, how do you feel about this entire situation in general? Um, how do you feel about what Freddie Gibbs and Mike Tyson were talking about? And how do you feel about Umar Johnson's response? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. If you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also check it in case YouTube doesn't unsubscribe you, honey. Last but not least, make sure you hit the thumbs up, share the video. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.